Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Bonjour, you're watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. My name is TK Triadad, and I am not alone. <laughs> if you guys just only knew what happens behind the scenes. Uh, she is the ultimate cat mom, and she's also a wrestler. Please welcome Sarah the Rebel. What it do, what it do. Hey, and I am so excited about this guest. She is, this is her second time coming on the show, but for some reason, not for some reason, it's great. Every time a guest comes on for the second or third time, they just do amazing things. And she, like, when you look through her bio, like, I don't even know how she has time. So she's an actress. She's also like the queen of all trade. Just, just get TV show. She has a radio show. She has several podcasts. She was just on AEW and just like, it was just a fear. If you didn't see it, you need to go check it out. It was just a fierce performance. Please welcome Ariane Andrew. Hey. Yeah. hey. What is pussy popping? <laughs> How are you doing? I am doing well, girl. How are you doing? Good. So I, I got to speak to you a little bit yesterday. And um, I am now I'm kind of like infatuated, which is kind of going through everybody's social media and just doing a deep dive because I found out get so much more information through that. So I think the number one question on everybody's not mine, just more my mind is uh, you had you, you, you had a little boo thing. And then I noticed that the pictures weren't like together anymore. So what's what's the deal? Oh, I should have maybe said, can I get a list of the questions you're going to be asking me before? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, are we going to spill some tea? Okay, so long story short, Jordan and I have known each other since we were in college. So we've been best friends or people are like, oh, did you guys ever hook up? It's like, no, that's literally like my BFF. We started dating a little bit over a year ago. And then just, I feel like if you were already kind of going through some stuff, you know, personally, then it's just, I felt like this year really brought it out. And I feel like this is the time I feel like people need to be reflective and figure themselves out. So, right. you know, ultimately as a relationship, it is not working right now. Who's to say what the future brings, but that's still my good friend. Like it's still my bestie. We are taking a little pause on the podcast. We were still doing that. We own a business together. So it's like, you know, the show must still go on. I love that we can still have that foundation to be like, you know, like he's actually going through some stuff and he just called me yesterday to talk. Like, so I, I'm glad we still have that. Okay. That They're going to be like the rock and, um, oh, yep. Her name just left Danny. me. Okay. That's Danny. fine. Danny. His ex-wife. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I mean, all positive vibes. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Because it was one of those things and I, I'm, I'm, it's not, this is not that type of show. I always ask the guests first, like I have this question. So, you know, we did talk about it before, but you know, it's so funny how social media just kind of gives for people like me who just kind of look at things, give those stalkers. Little... I believe you're called stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> Can I actually appreciate that you do do that? Because I hate when people are like, what do you have going on? I'm like, bitch, are you follow me? Do you see what I now post? Like, I, I am very expressive with saying what I have going on. I'm like, come on now. <laughs> Yeah, well, you have a lot going on. I actually um, really love, like, the, the I, I was looking over your guest list for Sipping the Tea. Like, mm -hmm. that is, like, it's just very, very diverse. Now, um, as far as guests are concerned, who's, like, your ultimate guest that you want to have on that show? Ooh, that, I don't know. So, is it going to be, like, interesting? Because, I don't know, this is a wrestling, like, more of that genre i'm really big into the entrepreneurship world just because that's part of what i do mm -hmm. and there is this guy named andy Fursella, um and i've been trying to get him on for a while he owns first form so it's like a supplement company and i just love how he came from nothing like he's killing it and he has like this he has a podcast he's like Bitch, the reason why you did it, like he talks like that and it's not for everybody, but I right. love people who are just so authentic. So I want to have him on just because I know like he's not going to hold anything back. So it's a work in progress and I'm going to put it to the atmosphere because he said you have my word before the end of the year I'm coming on. So Andy Frisella, <clears throat> I'm going to be checking back up because you did say that and I do got the receipts. Okay. I mean, it's just about being consistent. I'm sure you know, because you like you've just done it. You've done it all. So I'm sure that's going to happen. And we still have a little bit left in left in the year. Yeah. And that's not like the ultimate guess. I'm just saying for for 2020 goals, just because I've been trying to get him on for a while. So yeah. and yeah. then um, so my thing is like I do follow you. And it was just one of those things where I think we had you on the show and you were also on Xbox show. I think a year and a year and a half ago. And you were like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the ring, but you know, nothing was kind of like planned. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing you in this badass gear 
and you're on AEW. So like, you know, what was that experience like? Um, you know what? It was actually really refreshing because I, I just like to keep it super real. And for me, I almost wanted to say no to the opportunity just because I was so nervous. I was like, I haven't been in the ring. At one point, I was training earlier in the year before COVID happened for Effie's um, big gay brunch to have the met match with my um, boo, Jamie. And because I hadn't been in and I'm like, oh, my, this is like a lot of pressure. It's so last minute. I almost said no because I'm like, how the fuck am I going to? even look am I going to look like shit because I already only have a little bit of wrestling experience and then on top of that what is the backstage going to be like but I was like you know what don't do it for fans don't do it for family don't do it for management like who are you doing this for Mm -hmm. and I was like you know what I'm doing it for myself because I want to prove that you know what like when you can face a fear it's like the most rewarding thing so everybody there is so fucking friendly it's just it's a different environment like people want to actually see you win there it's it's such a family like Once I was able to like go backstage, I was like, damn, this is what life is about. Like, I love it because it's, it's something very different that I'm not used to. I'm not used to, you know, people wanting you to do well. Everyone's like, I'm trying to get to the top and you know, no one's ever trying to help anybody else out, which I never fucking understand. But the experience was great. Are there some things I wish I could redo? Yeah. You know, cause we didn't have time to go over stuff, but it's like, you know, and nothing's ever going to be perfect. As long as I can say I did my best. Okay. given the circumstances so any like did anybody reach out to you any plans like did uh, you get girl, by the bud? maybe i'm just kidding uh <laughs> well if they did i'm not about to spill the tea right now but all i can say is wrestling is what started my career i'm always gonna have like there's always gonna be that spot of like love and like whatever's meant to happen is meant to happen and whatever wasn't was never meant for me to have period mm-hmm. So you're saying that there might be some talks, but you're just not going to spill it here. But 2021. All I'm going to say is watch this space. Okay. You can follow me at Ariane. Andrew. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Cause I, I'm, that's where you're going to get all the tea. So I'm going to just leave it like that, but mm-hmm. I'm going to put in the universe. I am not done with the ring. Okay. Done. So a possible you and Trinity collab. <laughs> Girl, you is really over here. Try- you gotta remember, this is also what I do. So you can't get me, girl. Like I already, I already know how this works. I feel um, like I'm watching uh, two master swordsmen <laughs> <laughs> battling each other right now. No, you know what? I really, I like, I for for folks who like watch the show and watch me and like when I talk wrestling, I absolutely love Trinity. Like I just go hard for her. And it's like, you are an amazing person. I know you guys are good friends. So I definitely just want to see like, I, I, I think, yeah, like a combo. Cause I, I watch you on Total Divas, right? And I've seen your growth, like from Total Divas into your social media, all this other stuff. I just seen your growth. And I just feel like if you guys were together again, this time around, it's going to be a whole different beast. We would be making history. That's for, that's for sure. I mean, it is true because I feel like, again, t- like timing is everything, right? Mm-hmm. So I look back at who I was when I was in my young 20s. I mean, I'm still a, like, what you see is what you get. I'm still very, you know, flamboyant in my personality, but it's like now more knowing how to shut the fuck up and just doing things the right way. Like taking time away, I always think helps when you are able to right. walk away because it's like a relationship, right? Business, when you're in something, you can't you can't take a step out when you're, when you actually take a step out, you have time to reflect and be like, Oh, I don't have any regrets, but if I could have did this differently, you know, like maybe these puzzle pieces would have moved around differently, but I don't have regrets. So it's like, I don't know. I do think that there's still something people love us together. I mean, we're a great yin and yang. She's the fucking go-getter, athletic, badass bitch in the ring. And I'm the one like, Hey girl, I'm about to back that up with my mouthpiece. Okay. That's why I think it's gonna be a good combo. So you know, even though you want, don't want to tell us, I, I have a feeling there's something, and I've I've been feeling there's something in the works. And I I get why you don't want to tell us, so it's cool. It's cool, but you know, or maybe there's not. I'm just gonna leave it up. I'm gonna just leave it up in the air for people to be like, hmm, is there or is there not? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay. I'm gonna bet there is, but we'll see. We'll go from mm-hmm. there. Sarah's like, I don't know what's happening right now, but. <laughs> Um, so have um, have you been doing any other like any wrestling training since the AEW appearance or are you just like just hardcore workouts and kind of going from there? 
Um, just hardcore workouts. I mean, COVID is still very, very real in Los mm-hmm. Angeles. It's like we're actually going back on another lockdown, you know? So it's kind of, it's kind of in a sense been a great way to become adaptive and mm-hmm. like find things and be creative. Like, especially as a creator, I'm like, oh, okay, this is happening. Wow, I'm already going to be 10 steps ahead. So unfortunately, no training because it's, it's like I would literally have to be doing like one-on-one, which I feel like defeats the purpose is when I'm training, I like to train with different people because then it teaches you like how to work with different people. If you're just working with one person, you're just getting adapted to that. Plus I just have a lot going on right now. I'm about to buy a house. Like there's just, there's a lot happening, but um, we'll see what's popping for 2021. See if LA will finally do a little opening and be like, hello, you know? Yeah. We'll see what happens with that. But Uh people can train at home and you have an app that people can train with you. For fitness, not for in the rain, girl. Well, yeah, for fit. Well, I mean, okay. If you guys saw, if you guys didn't see Ariana's body on AW, you need to go and see because it's uh, well, just go on her Instagram. It's all popping. So whether you're training in the ring or not, like that app, I think is gonna get everybody right, like for 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 sure. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so it's called Double A Academy, and pretty much it's not only to get you into physical shape, but mental shape, because people do not talk about how important the mind is. If you can conquer the mind, you can damn near conquer the world. You become unstoppable. So long story short, it's an app where you can work out from home, especially with this pandemic, but you're, you're able to add weights. And what makes my app different, like I said, it gives you mental challenges. So for I'll give you an example. On every Sunday for um, the challenge I have, it's a four week called Ready for 2021. It's like, you know, compliment a stranger. That's your challenge for this week. Because it it gets you out of your comfort zone, right? So when you're, when you become uncomfortable, that's when you grow. So you can download that bad boy on, um, what is it? Uh, I always get, it's Google Play and on, uh, the, the Apple Store. Yeah. So Apple it's Store. under the it's uh, it's powered by Tribe. So it's under the Tribe, T R Y T R Y B E, and then you'll see Double A Academy. Okay. Ariana. And then how did that come up? And then how did it come about? Did you approach them? They approached you, or was it just like a collab collaboration? So I know for a lot of people, they're like, oh, manifestation of like, I'm so big with that, like writing down stuff and saying like. I'm going to fucking make this happen. And I remember starting this like two years ago saying, I want to have this app. I want to call it double A Academy, all these things. And like, they approached me, um, which was great. Cause when, when I was initially trying to make an app, that shit's expensive to do it from like the ground up. So mm-hmm. they were like, well, we'll do, we'll design it. We'll do everything. And we just take a portion of the back end. So I was like, that's, that's it. Let's go. So that happened September 2019. I was like, I want to launch it January 1st. I did. And so the one year anniversary will be coming around the corner. Mm-hmm. And it's, and you know, like you sign up for like the newsletters, like I give like nutritional value. It's like, it's a little bit of everything and we're still, it's still growing, but it's, and it's for a very cheap price. Like it's $9.99 per the month, you know? So it's, it's like almost having a gym membership, but you're getting the mental right. um, aspect of it all. Yeah. And the timing was like perfect. I mean, obviously you didn't plan it, but the timing was perfect with COVID and people being stuck at home and stuff like that. I mean, or did you plan it? I don't know. We'll see. I'm just <laughs> we just thought we all know COVID is a, oh, never mind. We won't go there. But maybe a little bit of a scam. Oh, geez. But yeah, congratulations on that. But that's not that's not all that you have. Um, prior to that, um, I think it's 2019 or 2018, you started that you had your um, film, Jade Pictures. Yeah. So how's that go? I know it won some awards and stuff like that, but is there any like um, additions to that or any other plans as far as filming? Yes, it's actually so funny. We just got off. We actually had a call Sunday with someone who's connected with FX and um, the whole point of Jaded Pictures. So for people who don't know what Jaded Pictures is, it's pretty much a short film that follows an influencer company. I mean, influencer, influencer couple that you think that they're living their best life, but really they're living their best lie. So this, the whole point of this is when you live for the camera, you die behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at someone's social media thinking that they have it all, they're typically only showing you their highlight reel. So right. be careful with what you're looking at and comparing your life to others. So I thought it was very, um, when we wrote it, it was just, it's still very prevalent now. Like, and we tied it into mental health and how, you know, depression and all that. And we like, um, has really affected people, especially with the pandemic when 
and people are like scrolling. So yeah, it's won three awards and it's not out to the public because once you put it out to the public, let's say for instance, Netflix sees it and it's like, we don't have a deal with Netflix. They can go create that in two seconds. Mm. You know what I mean? So we did not put it out um, because it's like, yeah, someone can go make it, but they're not going to do it like us. But if we put it out like that, they could be like, oh, we came up with it first. So we just, you know, had a conversation, like I said, with someone at FX. So it is slowly but surely, um, you're going to see it as a TV series. I mean, we're taking the meetings and it's it's been a very slow process, but anything worth having, you got to wait, right? It takes a lot of work. It takes time, effort, and energy. So Jada Pictures, y'all. Go watch the trailer. I don't know how you have time. So there's another project that you have. I'm looking for the um, Label My Keys. Yes. Oh, like, wait, hold on. Let me go get my keys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. It's never a dull, dull moment with her. I'm always, <laughs> you know, I'm extra, I'm always a little extra. <laughs> like, well, so, um, oh, this, I don't know if I want to show my phone number because I don't want motherfuckers calling me, but I'm going to just move it quick like this. So how this happened was I do a lot of hiking and I noticed so many people were losing their keys and I was like oh does it have like a little name tag or something on it I was like oh it's like a bag tag for your keys has anyone ever created that so even though it's not as technology friendly I'll get there that's just that's a lot of money and the bitch ain't got money to be investing like that so it's like starting small having that so guys if you need some stocking stuffers or you know some cute little or you want to support you know a, a woman who is trying to pop off with business Go to labelmykeys.com. We're running a little special. It's free shipping in the U.S. Um, yeah, we're also on Etsy. Yeah, I always say that wrong. But labelmykeys.com. Support a bitch and go get yourself that way. If you ever, if you ever lost your keys, you will never do it again. Cause not if we label them. So go get your motherfucking bag tag. Sorry, key tag at labelmykeys.com. Thank you. Okay, so I got your next business for you. Just t-shirts with your quotes on them. Because you so far, it's just been one podcast and you, I've written down like seven of your quotes. Cause I'm like, mm, yes, yeah. Like just make it sure. Just, you know, live, laugh, love. But instead it's like, bitch, label your keys. You know, I, 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 I see this as your next, next entrepreneurship. Boom. Um, I would buy one. <laughs> yes. Okay. And I was waiting for you, girl. I was like, oh, Sarah's so quiet over there. Yes. Okay. Come through, girl. TK is asking all these questions. Like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna I'm throw it. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna switch this on up. So, Sarah, girl, have you ever lost your keys before? Actually, I've never lost a key in my life. Um, I'm actually like really paranoid about that sort of thing, and so I, I keep my keys real tight in my hand. Even if we're going somewhere, I'll hide the keys somewhere if I'm nervous. Like I'm a we. I'm really weird about oh. that sort of thing. Well, good for you because I know I've never actually like lost my keys out. But so many people have. So obviously we're working on the good faith system, system that someone's going to call you because who just want to steal someone's keys? What you going to do with it? Right. You don't even know where to go to open whatever. So. <laughs> exactly. I was like, my mom, I think my mom did this to me. I'm paranoid. Like, oh, if you lose your keys, someone will break into your house. And I'm like, I have a PS4. Uh, so <laughs> that became my keys. Are That's right. your concern? <laughs> Wait, out of all things, the PS4. Girl, I am dead. Listen, oh I understand God. the PS5 is out now, and I seem like I'm talking about old news, but I am not made of money. And also, I'm not an early adopter, so my PS4 is the most important thing that I own. <laughs> Besides my cat. Okay. I'm not going to steal my cats. They're terrible. Well, we all have our things that are like, oh, okay, like, if anything about your house can get stolen, it's the PS4. You know, everyone has, mine's is glitty. I would lose my shit. I don't know where she is. I think she's sleeping, but I would lose my shit if someone stole it. Oh, glitty. goodness. All right. <laughs> Any other questions, Sarah? Uh, no, I thought I was being interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyways, girl, what's your Thanksgiving plans for? I'm <laughs> So speaking of not Thanksgiving at all, some people like to read books over Thanksgiving. Look, I'm gonna make this flow through. Um, you have an ebook. Yes, I do. Can you um, tell us a little bit about that and how you decided to write a book. Yes. So over the pandemic, when people were like, I'm losing my shit, that's when I'm like, label my keys was created. I was like, oh, no, we're going to use this time. People always talk about, I don't have time. I'm like, no, bitch, you're at home. You got time. By the way, I'm so sorry. I didn't even ask if I can cuss. I'm oh. not, that I'm, not that I'm sorry, but I still just wanted to check in just for the rest of the interview. Halfway through, halfway through <laughs> the interview. Halfway through the interview. Don't worry, we've got a bleeper. He's bleeping. No, just kidding. It's not getting bleeped. Oh, okay. No, but um, yeah, so I I just 
uh, Jordan and I actually made the ebook and it's just like a real because people hate reading and for someone who is more of an audiobook person I wanted to create something that was short sweet so like front to back it's 10 pages and it's like in bullet points mm. so it, it just gives you like some quick ways on how to have you know be successful but I'll be happy because there's a difference right you can see the most successful people in the world but they're like going through it they hate life so to me it doesn't matter black, white, whatever political background, we all just want peace and happiness. So it's teaching you how to have that as long as, as well as creating um, wealth in the process of doing it in health as well. So it all kind of like ties in. Okay. And you can get that on my um, website at um, www.arianandrew.com for full 99. So you've done a lot, right? You've written, you've written a book, you've done a TV show, you've wrestled is there you you know the the workout the app like is there something that you haven't dived into yet that is in the plans to dive into like a form of art or creation or something that you'd really like to do that you haven't gotten to um so i actually did just get to it i wanted to come out with some more music and i just last monday actually recorded um, my single called born with it that's produced by dave allen and we recorded that actually um in Damon Sharp Studios. So for people who don't know who Damon Sharp, not to drop names, but he he's worked with J-Lo, Ariana Grande, Bruno Mars. Um, so it was just like now taking the music and actually making it good because the mm. shit that I came out with years ago was stank as hell. That was some stank walk. So Lisa, I can admit it was like, oh, you tried, bitch. I mean, no one ever had did it. At least you did it. I mean, who cares if it was good or not? At least now I know this one's like, this is a bop. It's a minute and 49 seconds and it's like... <clears throat> it's pretty popping so expect for that to come out and then i'll be having a music video and it'll be like some cool artistic stuff like i'm going to be doing some wrestling so incorporating you know my past world with what i'm doing now and how it all intertwines together okay if you need a video girl i'm available and i know how to wrestle and dance so Ooh, okay i got you girl <laughs> i know i think i saw a video like uh sarah twerking like her boyfriend caught her twerking by accident or ig or something i'm like what is so I got WAP stuck in my head for like a week and I just kept singing it and just doing it. And he I just started filming me and I would catch him and be like, no, please, I don't have a butt anymore. Don't show anybody this. But it is Girl, embrace, embrace it. Embrace it and be like, you see this all natural? How many people can say they got this? It's like Watch a this bicep part. on my back. You see this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm dead. Girl, you better embrace that. Everybody else looks, everyone looks the same. So it's mm. great when I can like, when someone's like natural and again, like do whatever makes you happy, but it's actually great and refreshing to see people being like, this is me. What you see is what you get. How you give yeah. it a little booty too. I'm like, it's little, but you know, <laughs> it's quite, it's quite small, but it gets, it gets it popping. You get a little, you know, got a little, got a little pop to it. Oh, good. So um, you've also done like reality shows. Um, is there any, like, would you want to go back into that? Because I, I, well, tell me your experience, because you've been on a, a few of them. And I, and just kind of looking from outside looking in, it's just very, like, cameras are always just on you. And like, I, I feel like I would feel very like I'm a private person. So would you do that again? Or is it just like, mm, yes, I'm just, you would do it again? Any, re any reality shows in particular? So you know, what's funny, because I mean, I really do. And I'm not say that you know, queen of all trades. And I don't care, like, cause it's funny, you know, I never have to get credit of doing like all these things that I, I don't care it's cause I'm passionate about it. But even in the midst of doing Jada pictures, I have a few pitch decks. I was pitching a few reality shows cause I'm just a creator. I'm like, I don't gotta be in it. I had lots of ideas. Um, one that almost got picked up, but then it got uh, the red flag. Like, you know what I think would be cool um, because I am moving to Arizona and buying a home. And I was like, they don't have any real housewives of Scottsdale. And I'm like, Scottsdale is very like bourgeois yeah. and like, it's a poor man's LA cause it's not as expensive, but it definitely has that vibe. So I was like, you know what? I think it would be kind of fun to do one of those because at the end of the day, what I've learned about reality TV, right? Like just like WWE, I didn't play the game. Cause I'm like, oh no, you want me to look like ghetto ratchet. I've already kind of done that. Like, come on now. Like now that I am, um, I would make sure I was an executive producer because then I'm, I have leeway on to say like, no, we're going to do it this way. Like, oh no, I'm going to play the game. I'm going to give you what, what, what I know the world wants to see, but I'm going to do it on my terms. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely go back now because I know how to play the game, but I'm also, um, 
I think I would just also have a little bit more leverage just, than just being a puppet saying, no, bitch, you sit down and we do what you say. And it's like, oh, that doesn't really work for my personality where someone's just, and on top of that, how many, how much coins are we making? Oh, would you want me to do that? Oh, that's a little extreme. Right. You know? So I would definitely, I would definitely go back. There was actually, we actually, um, me, our friend Jay Ryan, Christina, we had a pilot for a reality show. Um, it didn't get picked up, but I thought it actually would have been really good because the whole premise was around Jay Ryan. And he's like this very, you know, bougie gay guy that hangs out with all the pretty girls, but he's like the PR for pretty little things. So it's like, there's always celebrities around. Thought it was a really good, you know, thought process, but yeah, it didn't, it did not get picked up, unfortunately. Well, you know, there's always time where 2021, I'm sure they're gonna have a lot of money doing that. But yeah. I have a question. I don't know if you've um, been watching a lot of WWE. And I feel like the position that Lana is currently in mm-hmm. is kind of the, not necessarily the position. When I think of Lana, I think of um, Eva Marie and yourself as far as, you know, you 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 want to kind of gain those skills in order to be good at the ring. But the WWE universe is not allowing you to kind of do that. Yeah. And um, I feel like the route that you and Eva Marie took was, you know, you still like, I'm trying this and, you know, I'll just do whatever I need to do. Um, but it feels like what they're doing with Lana is like, this has kind of been the thing with Lana for the last couple of years, but now like the throwing through the the, the table and now she won the Survivor Series. We're going to see what's going to happen, play out with all of that. Um, would you, would that be your play or would that be, or would you suggest something else? Or like, what would be your suggestion to her? Like if I had to give her advice? Yeah. Or, if, um, or even if you were in that position, what would you do? Where they I were mean, putting you through tables over and over again. Nine times. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, it is kind of hard because if you, it, 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 there's a lot of things that go into this, right? So it's backstage stuff, it's politics, it's this, it's like, there's a lot. It's not just one thing, you know what I mean? Um, and that's, that, that's very hard to say because I don't know how it is with her with backstage stuff like that plays like if people fucking hate you know like it's 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 a it's a lot that goes with it and I don't know that's actually like a tough question I mean all I would all I would what I would suggest to her if she wants to be a force to reckon with and really be taken serious it's like literally step down like step like I mean she you know we're already in COVID you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like this, like that's the time to be like you know what I'm about to because their stuff is different than obviously LA like right. me going to tr- it's very different than what they have in the protocol and like the money and stuff that they can do with because I don't want to sound contradictory because people are like oh well bitch you just said that you're not you're not but I'm like it's different because I'm doing this in an indie style I'm also trying to protect myself and there's I'm paying for this and there's right. not the protection of like um going trainings and all this stuff to protect yourself so mm-hmm. because wwe is a major corporation like this would be a time to be like while all this is going on what can i do you know because it's like they're not traveling all over the place because you can't do that so it gives you more time to be like i can be more focused and then when you're mm-hmm. just on the road balancing from here that's it's so hard to try to train but right now would be the time to be like i'm if i want to be a force to reckon with I got to get better. Like I, I have to step it up because you're going to get lost unless you're right. going to play that role of like the mouthpiece and then coming in the ring every now and then again to do a little, no, 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 But what the girls are doing now, like I couldn't even keep up. Like there'd be no way I'd want to step back in unless I'm playing a gimmick character where let's say for instance, I'm with, I'm with Trent. She's doing most of the work and I'm like doing little things here then. And we would have to be like heels, you know, because it's right. like, cheating, doing stuff, coming out, talking shit until I'd be able to build momentum to be like, oh no, she's a force to reckon with. Right. And it's give and take because you could be a bomb ass wrestler, but if you have no personality, you're whack. Like you have to have a character. So I almost prefer someone who has a character over someone who just do flips and all that. I'm like, that's boring. Cause you can teach wrestling, but you can't teach personality and charisma and like getting under people's skin, period. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. I know, I would just say like, and if it's not that, like, okay, cause you know, speaking's her lane. Are you taking your acting classes? Like do like, be just like extraordinarily like just fucking fire in right. one thing if you're lacking it in another. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know, that's, that whole thing just breaks my heart. Really, what, do you, what do you think is gonna happen? 
Um, well, I mean, there's there's some theories that, you know, they're trying to push her out. Um, I just feel you, like, like the company. Yeah. Well, because, you know, her husband's out now. Yeah. Um, I just feel like she has to. I, I don't know. I get I get I think personally, when you get to a certain age, like the bullying stuff, like is not is like a no thing for me. And, it, and I would rather I ra- I would rather die fighting than for you to like bully me. So, and I would, and I would also play as dirty as possible. So if like Nia Jax is like, you know, obviously twice the size of me, then I'm getting everything and you, you're going to be hitting the cooch. Like, you're going to be like, you're just going to be like, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm on top. And I feel like that's not what she's doing. She loses a match and then she's like, oh no, they're going to beat me up again. And it's just kind of like, that doesn't really speak to an individual that, you know, you know, it might be dealing with that. If you can't get behind someone, especially like, okay, well, they just got there. Like, and I get it because I, I was a jobber, right? It's just like, oh, let me just, you're going to just get your ass beat and you're always losing all the matches and yada, yada, yada. Like, it's, it's a, it's a catch 22 because it's hard because it's like, well, if you're not supreme in the ring, like, but I don't know. I take that back because I know there's been people in the past that are doo doo, and I ain't gonna say no names. But they were fucking held on like a motherfucking pedestal. They 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 ain't ever losing a match. And right. if they, if it they lost a match, it's like oh, it's a tag team match and the pin on someone else. You know. So it's like it, it's again. I don't really know what's going on backstage yeah. and and all that stuff. And like you, her husband's not there. So that's that's almost like you know when Cody left, Brandy left. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's kind of like, it's going to be kind of hard because it's like, I don't know if there was bad juju juice too right. when he got released. So it's like, if there was something that happened with him, it's going to be very hard for you to. Yeah, it's, it's just already automatically pinned on you. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, one thing I would say about her, like she's created a huge, amazing presence though on social media. So no matter what happens, she could take that. Like I know her publicist, like her publicist works with a lot of um, the people we have on Sippin'. Like, you know, she's in good hands. So if she did decide, maybe it's again, stepping away to be like, I'll come back when things are in her, because timing. Right. So I, I do just want to point out something. TK, this has been on your mind for several days now. So like, obviously this, something is going right because you were thinking about it. You were thinking about this thing that you saw and you're pondering yeah. it. You know what I mean? So like, she must be doing something right that she is on your mind and it is sticking with you. So well, I mean, it's, it, it's one of those, I mean, I just don't like, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can speak to it more, Ariane, but like, Sometimes WWE, they just get political and it's more about, not about, it's not about your talent. It's not about the storyline. If you just piss them off, you know, then your storyline either gets canceled or like, it's, it's just very emotional. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that it's not, you know, what's happening to her is not based off of somebody's emotion towards her because she is great on the mic. She's not the, she's not the best wrestler, but there's plenty of people on that roster that they don't even have any mic skills. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like one of those things where for me, when I see stuff like that, like you're getting the TV time, like I just don't, I don't know. I just don't like people looking like pussies. Like, you know, it's just one of those things where I get somebody like, there's always like a David and Goliath type stuff, but just the position that they put her in. And yeah, she and she might be playing me. It might be all an act. I mean, yeah. What if it's just like, ha, ha, this is exactly because then she goes and gets the title. Okay. Like they give it to her. Right. You so know, I'll be, I'll be happy. But then, but then if they actually did that, that'd be great. Cause for the first time it'd be unpredictable. Like, cause everything I hate to say it. I mean, I don't like to bash them because that's who created my career. But a lot of the times when you like, I keep up through social media, you know, and it's like, so I'm seeing what's going on. Like, cause I do try to stay like, you know, in touch, even though sometimes I have feelings and I'm like, mm, I need to step away. Cause then I get emotional. Then I'll start thinking about like memories and shit, but it's just kind of like, um, Damn, I didn't forgot my train of thought. What was I gonna say? Uh, uh, it would be a surprise. Oh, oh, it would be a surprise if you know they did that, and that would actually be great. Like when, remember when Zach Ryder, like that came out of nowhere when he got the title, and it was like, mm-hmm. yes, it, so we did not predict that because right. everything is so predictable. You know, if Sasha is gonna have a match with Liv, Sasha's winning. You know what I mean? Right. It's like. Mm-hmm. 
it's just you can predict it based on like the hierarchy and i feel like sometimes they always this is a thing though too with wrestling fans and wrestling fans do have a lot to do with what the writers they look at they look at that stuff right it's, everyone loves an underdog until the underdog is no longer an underdog and it's like fuck you because they feel like they can't relate so it's like when someone's getting like shitted on they're like oh da -da 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 -da. then when someone finally gets an opportunity they're like oh we're so tired of seeing this same person over and over it's like what do you want like yeah. a catch-22 like but i do think sometimes they are too repetitive with when someone's at the top to like okay now it's time to pass the torch right. to the next person that we haven't seen before not the passing the torch to the same circle like let somebody else like come up like for instance i think Liv, i think she's cute i think she has like she has potential like i think she's a good wrestler and stuff like she could have the title it's, right. it's different it's new it's like it's un, it's un, and she would be able to hold her own i feel like yeah you know what so I mean? like giving it to some people who you would just like should give it to bianca she's i mean she's a girl's athletic like she's great um it'd be great too to see a little bit more diversity like mm -hmm. I think that's gonna happen soon. So, I hope so. Of all these I mean, I feel like they should have given it to her when she was in NXT, but that's a whole. I've been up waiting for Tran, okay? Like, yes. Tran. So speaking speaking of all these awesome women, um, if you could tag team with any woman in WWE or AEW or even outside of those two areas and be a tag team again, besides Trinity, because we know we all love her, uh, <laughs> who else would you want to tag with? Hmm. Just for shits and giggles, um, I don't let me not fuck up. Um, just because it's because of her gimmick, because I just think it would be funny for us to have. Like, it wouldn't. I don't think it wouldn't be a serious match. So let me do. Let me break it down for two. One person who I'm like, they're a force to reckon with, and like their skills are great. And then someone who's more of a character. So I want to. I don't want to mispronounce her name. Roche is it Roche in um, AEW? I uh, don't know how to pronounce her name either, but yes, it, I know exactly who you're should, talking about. <laughs> um, my bad, but she does like she has a little gimmick with the purse, mm -hmm. and she, like just so I think that that would be funny, just because character stuff. Um, but as far as like beside Trin, I would want to say, I would want to say Sasha. You know, mm. like she's really talented in the ring. Like I've watched even some of the stuff she's been doing with her promos and. I'm like, okay, girl, like, I mean, even what she did with Booker, because I'm better than you. Because, I, like, I was like, oh, she took it there. <laughs> I feel like, because she's also reminds me of a person who just doesn't give a fuck, but mm -hmm. she's talented and can back it up. So it's like, oh, I'm going to say what I want and do what the fuck. And I remember when she first started, that's, she was a very quiet, like, subdued, like, oh, my God. So I can respect someone who's like, no, bitch, I'm good. And also, I will do whatever I need to say because I am good. Mm -hmm. so, so I would say her. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Any other projects coming up? Um, No, just besides the music. That's like the most recent thing okay. that I just did. So, so are you, you're dropping that this year, right? No, um, I'll, I'll be at the top of next year come up with this set date um i wanted to do it for the first but based on one of you know one of my team members are like nope because this is going to be our first COVID with mm -hmm. the new year they're going to be focusing on that you don't want to do music then like do it maybe two weeks after when there's like that dry part after the new right. year happened and nothing's really going on so probably yeah. maybe mid-january and for people who are music heads they know music usually drops on a friday so yeah. dropping it yeah Okay. I like it. Uh, so we're going to put you through some rapid hot tags. So I'm going to say a question. You can say whatever comes here. My mind. All right. So first question, uh, favorite quarantine snack? Chips and salsa with guac. Mm, I like that. Do you prefer working out at home or at the gym? Both equally. I like working out outside. Uh, cooking, at, um, cooking at home or ordering out? Both. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained one quality or ability, what would it be? Um, ooh. Uh, to um, have the mindset of Albert Einstein. Okay. What in your life are you most grateful for? Um, family, friends, and being able to, I guess, being in a sense, being able to be a role model and put a smile on people's faces. Okay. If you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30 year old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you choose? 
Like, is it like, well, what I want? Yeah. The mind, the, of mind a- the, the mind of a 30 year old or the body of a 30 year old? Oh, mind of a 30 year old. Okay. See, Emily would be happy. We, yeah. Emily, um, Sarah and I chose body. It's like, we're, we'll do the body part. I'd rather be just really hot and crazy old lady. Um, I, I guess that, that is, tr- that is true. Cause you've already lived and you do have like, that is true. Oh yeah, maybe, let me, so let me, re- <laughs> <laughs> let's rewind. The body popping, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so Sarah's gonna do the star of the week real quick. Today's star of the week is Nevaeh. Debuting in 2004, Nevaeh wrestled for Heartland Wrestling Association in Ohio before moving on to Shimmer, where she was one half of the inaugural Shimmer Tag Team Champions, WSU, where she's a former spirit champion, CCW, Ring of Honor, and Shine. Last year, she and Jessica Havoc teamed up to enter the WOW Women of Wrestling Tag Tournament, where they made it to the finals. Teaming up with Havoc again, Nevaeh signed to Impact this year, where their two look to become the Knockouts Tag Team Champions. Nevaeh is married to her childhood sweetheart, Jake Chris, who is also signed with Impact. Be sure to follow her at oi 4 k and tell her Women's Wrestling Talk sent you. And if you want to learn more about a star of the indie wrestling scene, please shoot us your suggestions for future stars of the week. Boom. Thank you. Mm. Now, uh, where can everybody find you on social media if they're not following? Oh, wait, girl, did you just say my name wrong? Girl. Did I get it right this whole time? You got it right this whole time. They were like, area. Now tell everybody. Listen, she's from another country, okay? She pronounces things crazy. Oh, my God. And I was practicing, too. I was like, I know this one. I need to say it properly. It's okay. But you can follow me, Ariane. Across the board at Ariane Andrew, my talk show and podcast at Sipping the Tea TV show, and um, also label my keys and go get your keychain. And also, you can go on my website, www.arianeandrew.com, where you get all the tea. Mm. Yeah, I was like, this, we were just, we we're so close, you so close. Take it two minutes, two, two more minutes. minutes. <laughs> Almost, but it's okay, girl. I still got love for you, and you know, I, you know, I fucks with you. All the time. Oh but like, I hate when that happens. Hello. I hate when people do that to me. So I'm just like, I'm always kind of particular on names. And I'm like, I need to. I don't the script. She has it written out in the script. I don't take it, it personal. It's just, it's more funny. I'll just, I'll call you out. But it's not like, I'm like, it's just like, oh, I'm going to just call you out on it and just say, oh, you, it's just think like Ariana Grande without the A. So that's what I, I, I don't know. I think my mind goes into, I don't know. Anyways. It, it's all good, girl. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I really look forward to um, everything. I mean, like I said, you are constantly busy and that's that, constantly busy doing amazing things. So I'm looking Thank forward you. to 2021 because I just know that you're just going to have a lot of great projects. And, you know, I know you and Trin, WWE is, is going to be popping. It's, it's you must. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me not get too crazy. Hold on. A little bit. I, know it's, I, 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 think, I think they're missing opportunity if they don't, they, if they don't do that. But, you know. What? Out. WWE um, missed an opportunity. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have to be WWE. What if she came over to AEW? It's like wherever wherever the home is meant to be, let's make it happen. Because, you know, like, who's if, they, if, it, if it could be a reunion and there's, like, an opportunity somewhere, like, you got to go with what's going to be the most fruitful, right? Right. Like, like, so, yeah. Or is it, is it even impossible with her contract that you guys could do, like, a, like a YouTube... Uh, Independent like, type of thing. Yeah, not not even like I, I would just like to see you guys go shopping. Like, I I feel like you guys together just watch. Like, it's just entertaining to me, and I would love to see it. So I'm mean, I'm just putting it out in the universe when COVID is, is released. I mean, go to Florida and go shop, or go to Atlanta, or just, you're like just go somewhere. Um, we we're gonna work it out. <laughs> we're gonna work it out. I'm just saying my suggestion. That's all I'm saying. Um, but thank you so much for coming on, uh, Sarah. Where can everybody find you? You can find me everywhere at Sarah the Rebel. Sarah is an H, as God and the Bible intended. And you should be sure to check out my Patreon for the month of December because it's going to be popping. Yes. These two ladies with their with their pussy popping. I'm trying to get on your level with all of this. I'm like, keys? Okay, what can I get? What can I get? <laughs> <laughs> so many projects. And don't forget to follow us on all social media, WW Talk on IG, WW Talk Pod on, um, on Twitter. And then also... Um, also, shout out to Natalie for being our very first subscriber as far as on um, Anchor and all the rest of the people who are coming after that. We really, really support. Uh, we really appreciate your support. We have so many things coming down the pipes. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is TK. You can follow me on everything at TK Trinidad. Until next time, guys. Ciao.